Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Exodus chapter 13 and I'll be reading verses 17 through 22. And this is what it says. When the king sent the people out of Egypt, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was the shortest way. God said, if they have to fight, they might change their minds and go back to Egypt. So God led them through the desert toward the Red Sea. The Israelites were dressed for fighting when they left the land of Egypt. Moses carried the bones of Joseph with him because before Joseph died, he had made the Israelites promise to do this. He had said, when God saves you, remember to carry my bones with you out of Egypt. The Israelites left Succoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. The Lord showed them the way. During the day, he went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud. During the night, he was in a pillar of fire to give them light. In this way, they could travel during the day or the night. The pillar of cloud was always with them during the day, and the pillar of fire was always with them at night. Pray with me. Jesus, this day, may we give thanks because you're, you're here. You're not way off up in heaven. You're not watching us from a distance. You're here. It's not our goodness. It's yours. Use us and use this day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. The year was 1916 and history was made right here in Atlanta, Georgia. The most lopsided college football game ever. Georgia Tech beat Cumberland University 222 to nothing. <laughs> that's a lot. At halftime, it was 162 to nothing. That's a big football game. Well, at least for Georgia Tech, it was a big football game. For Cumberland University, they didn't think much of it at all. They felt beaten down. They felt drummed down to nothing. One of the players said, well, the best play we had was we had a pitch out to the end and we only lost 10 yards. I think that was our best play of the game. 222 to nothing. At one point of the game, the quarterback fumbled the football and it, he fumbled it. It was a snap from the center and he fumbled it toward the fullback. He yelled to the fullback, pick it up, pick it up. When the fullback yelled back, you pick it up. You're the one that dropped it. Well, you get to understanding that, you know, being beaten down, being drummed down that much, that sometimes you just don't want to pick it up. You just don't want to keep going. Life is hard. Very often life is hard. Very often life is hard. And that's the way it was for the Israelites. For 400 years, they were slaves. 400 years, it was the Egyptians that lorded over them. For 400 years, somebody else was pushing them around. Someone else was in charge. For 400 years, they weren't in control of their own lives, their own decisions. 
what went on. And now, it's Moses who goes to, to the king, to Pharaoh, and says, let my people go. Well, where did he get an idea like that? It wasn't an idea. It was the Spirit of God speaking in a burning bush. But there are few burning bushes and miles and miles of desert in this life. And the story that we read this morning is the beginning of that journey through the desert. And the point of the story is that there are few burning bushes and miles of desert, but God is in the desert too. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. The first thing that I want to talk about is trust God in the detours. Verse 17 and 18 says, When the king sent the people out of Egypt, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was the shortest way. God said if they have to fight, they might change their minds and go back to Egypt. So God led them through the desert toward the Red Sea. The Israelites were dressed for fighting when they left the land of Egypt. They didn't go the shortest way. That's not the way that God left them. God led them through one detour after the next. It was only about a two-week journey from Egypt to the Promised Land, but when they followed God, it was a 40-year journey. There were lots of detours, lots of detours through the desert. And most, eh, not most often, always. Life is not a straight line in the direction we think we're going. One of the things that I've enjoyed most about being a pastor is uh, I've gotten to meet some uh, amazing people and gotten to know them. One of those amazing people I got to know early in my ministry was a fellow named Sid. Sid was one of those infectious people that people just wanted to be around. He was friendly, he was full of joy, and he was right about retirement age. People all different ages wanted to be around Sid, and I knew if Sid would go with me to, on a foreign mission trip to Mexico, that when he came back, that Sid would have a new set of eyes and that people would follow Sid. They'd listen to Sid because of the kind of person that he, he was and he, he would begin to have those eyes to look around and help people right there in the town where we were. Sid and the team, we flew from Atlanta to Monterey, Mexico. And I drove the team in a, in a van from Monterey to the work site. It was a couple of hours away from Monterey and, and Sid was sitting in the front seat with me. I asked Sid, I said, how did you get into the profession that you're in right now? He said, well, that's a funny story there. He said, started off in college and I didn't have much money. So I was in a, a work study program. He said, I'd, I'd work a semester for a company and then I'd, I'd go to, to college. I was majoring in in in, in what that, that company was interested in. And so they helped pay for my school. So I'd work there for a semester and then go to school for a semester, work there for a semester, and then go to school for a semester. And then at the end of college, we both could decide whether I wanted to work for them and they wanted me to work for them. I said, that sounds pretty good. He said, yeah. He said, the, my freshman year, I started off working in a plant in the, the lab. He said, this lab was a little different. It was right in the center of the, the plant and it had glass walls on two sides. It said often they had tours that would go through and look in the lab and see what we were doing and, and hear about what was going on from the tour guide. He said, I was mixing chemicals together and I spilled the chemicals down the front of my pants. He said, I knew that if I didn't get them off and get them off right away, they were going to burn through my trousers and onto my skin. He said, I tore my pants off as quick as I could. And there I was with my pants in one hand, standing in my boxers when a tour came through. They were all gawking through, through the glass at me, standing there with my pants in my hand in my boxers. I said, oh, that's awful. He said, well, not really. He said, after that, Everybody in the plant knew my name. <laughs> well, I thought that was pretty good. And he said, so at the end of four years, everybody knew my name and they offered me a job. But not just at that plant. He said, they put me on the fast track. He said, they flew all of the, the new hot recruits to, 
to headquarters to persuade us and, 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 and that this was the, the best company in the world to work for. So there we were. They were whining and dining us that, that first week. And, and after the fourth night, the, the CEO met with all the new young recruits at a dinner. And, and he was whining and dining us. And I was whining when I should have done a little more dining. And he said, the, the CEO lifted his glass and said, I make a toast that the new young recruits pay for dinner. And Sid said, I was feeling all full of myself, so I raised my glass and I said, well, I make a toast that we don't. And he said, when I put my glass down, I hit the boss's glass, knocked over his wine, spilled all over the table. I said, oh, what happened? <laughs> he said, well, the next day, I was assigned to the most remote plant in the company. <laughs> I said, that sounds awful. He said, well, not really. He said, it was there in that plant that I met my wife. He said, I knew she was something special. So I asked her to go out with me. She said she wouldn't go out with me unless I went to church with her on Sunday morning. So we went out Saturday night and we went to church on Sunday morning. He said, I, I never did go to church much when I was a kid. He said, and, and now God began working on me. And in that church, it was the first time ever I realized what Jesus had done for me on the cross. And I gave my life to him. <laughs> well, I got to thinking, you know, not many people can draw a straight line from burning their britches to receiving Jesus Christ. And Sid couldn't either because it wasn't a straight line. That this journey through the wilderness, there are a lot of detours. And God is there, even in the detours. Trust God in the detours. Trust God in the detours. But the second thing that I want to talk about this morning is that hope is what keeps us going. Verse 19, this is what it says. It says, Moses carried the bones of Joseph with him because before Joseph died, he had made the Israelites promise to do this. He had said, when God saves you, Remember to carry my bones with you out of Egypt. Well, it makes it sound like, you know, that Joseph turned to Moses and said, Hey, Moses, I know I'm going to die before too long. And yeah, I'm probably going to die before you all headed out into the, the desert. And when God saves you, carry my bones. That's not the way it was at all. Joseph lived 400 years before Moses was born that for 400 years, this was the hope that carried them through slavery. This was the hope when God saves you. Not if God saves you or if, if you do everything that God says, God will save you. When God saves you. When God saves you was the hope that was passed down for 400 years from generation to generation. When God saves you is the hope that Moses carries with him to the promised land. Hope. Hope. Terry Anderson was a, a Middle East correspondent for Associated Press when he was taken prisoner in 1985. For the next six and a half years, Hezbollah held Terry Anderson prisoner, moving from safe house to safe house to safe house, trying to make sure that no one could track him down. Terry Anderson struggled, struggled to live with hope during that time. And when he was released six and a half years later, he was asked, did you ever lose hope? And this is what Terry Anderson said, he said, that's a hard question. Of course, I had some blue moments of despair. But fortunately, right after I became a hostage, one of the first things that fell into my hands was a Bible. Over the last six and a half years as a captive, I've spent a lot of time with the Bible. And that helped me so much because it's about hope. The Bible is about hope. And hope is has a name. That name is Jesus. 
Jesus says in John 5, verse 28, that all of the Scripture is, is about me. That the early church knew that, that even, even in that journey from Egypt to the promised land, that that was Christ that was with them. And 1 Corinthians 10 tells about that. That hope has a name, and that name is Jesus. What Jesus did on the cross for you and for me was he died to forgive all that's past. All the sins that are past and and all the sins you might be in the middle of right now and all that ever would be. He died on the cross to nail them to nail them to the cross and take away their power once and for all. And he rose on the third day to live his life through you and me, that we might have a life called an abundant life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Yes, forgiveness. Forgiveness is is the first step to receive Jesus into our lives, but there are a lot of steps after that. There are a lot of detours. There are no shortcuts. And it's the hope, the hope that Jesus isn't just off in heaven, but he lives with us. The hope in Jesus Christ every day that keeps us going. This journey, there are a lot of distractions in this journey. And I think that the time we're living in right now might be most characterized by distraction. That life, that life comes in our money and our, our economic strength and accomplishments. And that money makes right. Sometimes it's, it's not the money. Sometimes the distraction is that, that might makes right. If we can get people to just do what what we want them to do, whether it's by coercion or by persuasion, that might makes right. At other times, it's the distraction that the many makes right. As long as a majority are on our side, then, then the many makes right. It's not the many. It's not the mighty, and it's not the money. It's Jesus Christ that makes us right with God, right with others, and right with ourselves. That Jesus died on the cross, and he he rose to live his life through us, that we might have hope, hope, hope in him. Hope has a name, and that name is Jesus. Hope is what keeps us going. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is always. Always. Know that always is a long time. Verse 22 says, The pillar of cloud was always with them during the day, and the pillar of fire was always with them at night. Always is a long time. Journalist Skip Thurman interviewed a cab driver from Washington, D.C. named Percival Bryan. Percival Bryan drove a cab in, in Washington, D.C. for f- over 50 years. He had immigrated here from Jamaica. He stowed away on a banana boat in 1924. And for the next 50 years, through World War I, World War II, and the Vietnam War, he drove a cab. Hundreds of thousands of people drove in his cab. Well, it wasn't one cab. Over those 50 years, it was eight different cabs. Hundreds of thousands of riders, some of them presidents, some of them jazz musicians, some of them scientists, some of them everyday folks. And he asked every one of them to sign his book. He has 312 books full of signatures of people who rode in his cab. All 312 books are in the Smithsonian Institute. But what Percival Bryan is known for is his joy and his friendliness. And so Skip Thurman began to to interview him about what he had seen 
and his journey through those 50 years of people riding his cab, during some of the most troublesome years in the United States. And what he discovered was the joy that kept him going had a source. What Skip Thurman asked him is, what keeps you going? Percival Bryan said, my priorities, my friends, but most of all, God. Every morning I get down on my knees and I have little prayers. I ask God to go with me, to protect me, and ride with me, and take my eyesight, my nose, my mouth, and especially my mouth, and shape it, shape it for others. And I tell you, sometimes I feel very rich. I don't have nothing, not much money in my pocket. But inside, I have done my best, and God has given me the wisdom and the strength to keep going. Wisdom and strength to keep going. You know, when Jesus rose from the grave... He rose from the grave, not just to go off up in heaven, so we would remember something that happened a long time ago. He rose to live his life through you and through me, that we might know his wisdom and that we might know his strength. It's available for you today, that it might be in our eyes as it was in the ancient Israelites, that they, they saw God in that pillar of cloud by day and they saw God in pillar of fire by night. That he might be in our ears, in our nose, and in our mouths, in our mouths, that we might share with others. This morning it may be that you've, you've not invited Jesus to live his life through you. It might be that you're in a hard and difficult time I want to pray with you. Join with me. Jesus, we always need you. Yes, in the hard times. And yes, in the times that are the everyday and the ordinary times. It's always, always we need you. And always, you desire to live your life with us. This morning, be in our eyes, be in our mouths. Help us to share your presence with others and that your wisdom and your strength, that it lives with us. Jesus, you're the hope that keeps us going. And I think there's some folks this morning that long to hear your voice. Give us strength enough to lean on you. Not on our money, not on our might, and, and not on the, the many that we surround ourselves with, but on you. Know that you're in the detours, Lord. There are few burning bushes and miles and miles of desert. And I ask that you give us those eyes to see you in the detours. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, 
Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.